We are always so excited to announce the new Shiro of the Week here at Johnson Products for our No Excuse Stop the Abuse initiative. And today we get to meet Tori Lynn Heaton. And she has a very interesting background. Let's just get right into it. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. <laughs> so I guess you were a little surprised this morning to open your email. But um, tell us who your nominator is and how you came to be nominated. Oh, uh, yes. Um, Stephanie is, um, was my nominee and, or nominator, I should say. <laughs> and, um, she is just a very gracious woman that, um, that I had the honor and pleasure to have worked with, um, through my domestic violence work as a domestic violence investigator. And uh, she's just a phenomenal woman herself and, um, quite a survivor as well and, um, moved from survivor to now thriver. That's right. So you took this whole thing of being a survivor and turned it into almost a career. But before we get to that, could you just share with us your story? Uh, sure. Um, in brief, um, I started working for the Cranston, Rhode Island Police Department in 1989 where I met uh, my abuser who at the time was a police officer. And... Um, we worked together over the years and started dating, um, oh gosh, 1997-ish, and we married a year later, you know, figuring that I knew this person, had uh, worked with him for a number of years, almost 10 years at that point, and um, immediately um, he was very physically abusive, and, um, you know, looking back in hindsight, there were obvious signs before we had gotten married, but um, being younger, naive, um, ignorant to um, the reality of domestic violence, regardless of my training as a police officer, uh, I just never believed that it could happen to me. And um, that relationship um, escalated and uh, reached a point where there was no, I had no choice but to get police involved. and. Um, once that happened, it became a very, very big story locally and um, ended up attracting national media attention. And um, that personal experience is what inspired me to follow the career path that I did. Um, and, and I've basically dedicated my life to victims of domestic violence from that point forward. Okay, but before we leave that period, now had you ever seen, you know, uh, parents or anybody else around you, aunts, uncles, anybody else go through this? Was this all new to you? Uh, well, no, actually, um, my mother, uh, growing up, she was a single mom, and um, she had been involved in various relationships over the years, and um, I had witnessed firsthand domestic violence growing up with her, and you know, I was always able to see it and recognize it clearly that this was wrong and identify it from an outside looking in perspective, even though I was very, very young. Um, you know, as early, my memories go back as early as age four um, to witnessing domestic violence. And certainly, um, there is no way I could have ever possibly imagined that I would have um, become a victim myself. I, you know, was always an overachiever, um, always at the top of my class in high school, and, you know, whatever I ever did, I always invested my best, and certainly did not believe that that could ever happen to me. Hmm. Um, yeah, <laughs> wow. which really colors and, and shapes my presentations when I speak to um younger audiences now, I, I use that as a perfect example that, you know, you really do need to pay attention to what's going on around you and the relationships that you're in because I had everything at my disposal to be able to recognize having witnessed it, having been educated about it as a police officer and then, you know, um, being complacent, believing it could never happen to me. It, 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 it in fact did. Were the red flags there? Uh, oh yes, yes. Oh. Like, like I said earlier, um, you know, in hindsight, certainly there were red flags, and um, and even you know, in recognition at the time, you know, leading up to our marriage, 
Um, there was clearly violent behavior, but I chalked it up to stress. I chalked it up to um, a previous bad relationship on his part, blaming his bad behavior on that situation that once he, you know, moved on from that and, and we were actually married, that he would be able to finally trust me and that bad behavior would stop on his part. So I was very dismissive um, and very um, blind to what was happening um, what was happening to me, um, things that if I had responded to any other home and somebody reported to me that conduct, I, I would have, without hesitation, you know, said, you know, you, you know, you really need to rethink this. This is not right. This is wrong. You know, you don't deserve this. Um, but when you're stuck in the thick of it and, you know, having been as naive as I was at that point that this could never happen to me, I... Uh, convinced myself that this behavior would change. So you were in love, and outside of love, you can see things clearly, right? <laughs> so then you <laughs> well, took hindsight is twenty twenty. It's an amazing thing. <laughs> so you took this this um, thing that happened to you, and you didn't cower, you didn't shrink from it. You took it and decided to make it your mission to help other women. Tell me what the road was like since those days. Oh, well, um, once my uh, situation became public, um, there was, the, I mean, to, to use the word hostility is really just scratches the surface of what my experience was outside of the relationship and trying to get safe and trying to seek justice and uh, trying to reestablish myself. It's harder with um, a police I, officer, isn't it? Yes, yes, and we were both <laughs> members of the same police department, so, oh boy, yeah, that I can was, imagine. <laughs> the abusive relationship was one thing, the uh, other abusive is a whole other story, right. um, but what I realized as I'm going through this is that, oh my gosh, if this could be happening to me, who had the knowledge of how to get out of the relationship. You know, I might have been blind while I was in it, but certainly I knew what steps needed to be taken in order to get out of it. Um, and while I was going through that process and being so persecuted and being so ridiculed and being made to feel just as unsafe by those around me as I was being made to feel unsafe by my abuser, it horrified me that this is if this could happen in, to me as a police officer and I could be treated like this, as a police officer, and the system could be so hostile, the system's in place to, you know, protect and, and assist victims to get safe. If this all could be such an adversarial process for me, I could not even possibly imagine what it must have been like for others that didn't have as much knowledge base as I had, that didn't have as much knowledge of the resources and all of that. So my my vow to myself if I was able to survive the situation alive that you know everything that I could do would be dedicated to helping others to navigate the systems to get safe to you know convince them that there is help it doesn't necessarily have to be the police there are so many other resources out there and just getting that message out there that there is help you don't have to simply pick up the phone and call 911. That is an option, but you can pick up the phone and you can talk to a, an anonymous person on the other end and just have an ear and somebody to listen that understands, and you don't have to navigate the process of all of the persecution and ridicule from friends and family and, you know, the abusers, supporters and such on your own, that you can survive this and you can become a not only a survivor, but at the end, you can also become a thriver yourself. Well, as you've heard from Tori Lynn Heaton, it happens in Rhode Island, and it can happen anywhere, wherever you are. 
<laughs> and you have to be uh, aware and you have to know how to get out. You can't just leave. That's sometimes fatal. You have to know how to do what you're doing. So we here at Johnson Products congratulate you. We're glad to um, feature you on our website, johnsonproducts.com. And uh, there you will be enshrined with a number of women from all over the country who have been nominated by people who have been watching them and impressed by them. And uh, they're, they're doing the work to, as we say, you know, no excuse, stop the abuse. Uh, it's time to just get beyond that. And so you're working with the young girls. You're kind of preventing them from being set up for abuse as they go forward. And you've been using your story to help other women all these years. So congratulations and thank you so much for speaking with us here at Johnson Products. Thank you. Thank you so much.